Well, so far we have done up to design of columns. That means the load started from the slab, then your through beams it is transferred to column. Now what we have to do, that load we have to transfer to the ground. So that is, we have to now design the footings or foundation. So column will transfer the load on the footings and we have to give sufficient area so that it will take that it will not cross the limit of the bearing capacity of soil. So your geotechnical engineers after the soil investigation, they will provide us the bearing capacity of soil that is the basic thing we need and according to that we have to design that base of the footing and also we have to provide the reinforcement so that that foundation or footing that one will not have any crack or it will not say fail. Generally it happens that when you are having say column here, let us say these are the different columns. We are talking one frame, we can go little further. It happens that we can also provide the tie beam. It means we are providing here tie beams. <coughs> We are not giving any separately, we are not giving any say foundation for masonry wall. Wall generally it is made of masonry, so for that we are not giving any um, say foundation. What we are doing as if the here if we have the masonry wall, that load will be transferred to again column, this masonry wall and finally it will come to the ground. So it may happen that there are so many ways we can transfer the load depending on the situation. It may happen that one that generally it happens say it can start with say 5, <coughs> just simply say 5 kilo newton per say square meter. Then oh, we can have say your 10 like that this is the bearing capacity. So we can go to the different bearing capacity we can go and depending on the if the bearing capacity is less and load is more on the column then your footing size will be bigger. So if you have a plan, plan of a building, where we are having so many columns. And each of them, what is wrong with it? Each of them we have different column position. So these are the column positions. We are looking that one say plan of a building. This is the plan of a building and these are all columns. We have to give certain dimension of the footing because directly that if we just simply say 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter, 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter that column. So you can consider that one compared to the dimension of the building, you can al almost you can consider that column dimension is just li like a say needle. That means if you just keep it over the soil, it will just simply pierce. So because the soil bearing capacity that how much load it can take, that one dependent on that whether it will pierce or not. If it is hard soil, if it is rock, then obviously it will not penetrate, otherwise it may penetrate. So because of that, you have to give certain dimension here also and that we shall find out and it is very simple, if P is the load and bearing capacity say um, I can uh, consider say any bearing capacity say SBC soil bearing capacity if I consider. So I can find out P by A, A is the footing area. So I, if I know maybe say 10 ton 
per square meter. So, if we have say 10 ton per square meter is your say bearing capacity of soil. So, depending on that we can find out the safe bearing capacity of soil if we know then I can find out what is the area of the footing that will be equal to P by say safe bearing capacity of soil. So, I can find out the area of the footing that we can find out. And then whether we shall provide that one say rectangular column rectangular footing square footing or if this area comes say it may happen this area is coming such a way that if I consider the individual footing then it may overlap that is also possible. That means here the whatever area I am getting for this column footing and whatever area I am getting this footing that it may overlap or we are having very little very small maybe say 100 millimeter maybe say 50 millimeter gap. So, we can avoid that. So, that way we can make it say full whole one as I says just a wrapped one we call it wrapped that type of foundation also we can make it. For bridges particularly also for uh, say your high rise buildings for that also we have say pile foundations. If it is so particularly for bridges that we make it say um, pile foundation also for buildings also we make it high rise buildings not for ordinary one say your say 3 storey, 4 storey or 5 storey not like that. But if the bearing capacity is less then we have to make pile foundation also that is also possible. Now one case it may happen that is called say isolated footing. Our objective in this class just to introduce what are the different forces come in the footing and how to design what aspect you have to consider that is our objective. If you know one or two cases then immediately we can do for any other case. So, that is our objective here. So, isolated footing it may be square, it may be rectangular, rectangular then we can have combined footing simply we can have only say two the two columns the columns are so close we cannot give one any isolated footing in that case I can give one combined footing. The combined could be maybe for three or four also but generally we make it for at least for two we generally make it here. Now, what type of their say mm, uh, that footing size all those things you can find out for combined footing. The other one say footing on or piles. We, we shall mainly find out today at least a square footing, but before that uh, let me show you how it comes that piles. The pile footings it comes generally say this is the pump this is the pile that say your uh, I mean to say that where we provide the piles. So, let us say we are providing piles of 3, 1, 2. So, there are say 5 into 3, 15 piles. Okay. maybe say 20 meter long, 10 meter long those piles. That means it comes in this way. This is the one plan I am talking. So, we will have say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and over that these are all called piles each of them may be say 300 or 350 just give you some dimension at least you should know what is the dimension may be say 350 millimeter 400 millimeter that diameter. Over that this is called pile cap 
over that we should have I am talking for say bridges over that we should have maybe say three a big one just a schematic one I am talking. These are called peers, peer each of them peer and this is called peer cap. What could be the dimension of this one? It may happen 1200 millimeter dia, 1500 millimeter dia of the peers, each of them uh, because I have just to give you certain dimension. This one can come say your 1000 millimeter, 800 millimeter the depth and this peer cap it can come say 1000 millimeter the depth of the peer cap and over that that bridge deck will come. We provide the bearing. these are called bearing and over that your bridge deck will come. This is called bridge deck. So, you can understand that uh, how we transfer the load. Just though it is though we are going little bit out of context, but even then I, I shall tell you and that we shall do it at least for one multi-story building later on. We shall uh, analyze as well as design that one and what are the different load cases. Different load cases come, one is that obviously here dead load, other, other one we call it say superimposed dead load, then live load in terms of say vehicle load. There may be different classes of vehicles. Here what happens here that just for your reference I shall tell you. One so far you know that IS Indian standard. Another one is for roads that is IRC. So, Indian road code that IRC those codes are available for say your for roads and also your say for pavement for bridges also. So, those things it is available here. As a structural engineer where we are interested we are interested here that what is the soil condition. Say at least we should know what should be the pile length, length of the pile we should know then we shall provide the dimension, dimension of the piles maybe say 350, 400 millimeter whatever it is coming. So, that whatever load is coming at the top that load should be safely transferred to the ground that is our objective here. And since we are you can understand this one that we are having different piles over that we are having one plate, over that we are having piers generally three piers generally you provide. Then over that we are having pier cap finally that bridge deck is coming that which is called superstructure. So, one part is called superstructure the other part is called foundation. So, up to the peer cap that is your foundation I am talking this one for piles though it that is not in our scope here in this uh, beginners course, but I, I would like to say that one that how to design, but here also it is based on your say bending moment, shear force and axial load. In addition to that you will find out also torsion also, so far we have not covered mainly we have covered say your bending moment shear force and axial load. So, now let us come back to our say footing and that one say your isolated footing. What should be your loads? You should have load combination. Number 1 dead load plus imposed load. <coughs> so, it comes please note for calculating the size of the footing for size of the footing we do not take that 1.5 because we are not taking the limit state rather we are taking that one your say working stress because the bearing capacity of soil is given as say your working stress that one that is serviceable one not the one limited or ultimate bearing capacity. 
because ultimate bearing capacity divided by the certain factor of safety will give me the safe bearing capacity of soil which is the serviceable one. So, that is why here we do not multiply with that 1.5, we multiply with say 1.0 that is for dead load plus 1.0 say live load that is one case. The other case that dead load plus wind load which comes as 1.0 dead load multiplication factor 1 plus 1.0 wind load, it could be earthquake load also. Number 3 dead load plus imposed load or live load plus wind load or earthquake. So, it could be earthquake load or wind load which one is the uh, <coughs> governing one that we have to find out we check it. So, here it comes as 1.0 dead load plus 0.8 live load we take it when we consider the live load as well as wind load we take that factor or 0.8 times wind load or earthquake load. What I do I like to say here these are the whenever you are doing analysis you have to find out different cases that which one is the governing one you have to get different load cases. Different load cases for this say your building we get these are the three different load cases we generally get. So, dead load live load that is one case then dead, it may happen only dead load also another one case also it may happen dead load and imposed load dead load and wind load dead load imposed load and wind load or earthquake load either of them we shall take it we generally do analyze and find out which one is the governing one and we take that load. So, so what should be the uh, now come back to your area of footings we have to calculate. So, service load on column divided by shape bearing capacity of soil below. So, if we know the service load that means after giving the proper multiplication factor 1.0 this case or 0.8 with the live load and wind load when you are talking. So, service load on column divided by say bearing capacity of soil whatever they are on the basis of that you are can get that area of footings. So, up to this you will get your that service load, but now you have to give your say dimension thickness of the footing. When you have to give the thickness of the footing in that case what you have to do then we shall go to the factored load. So, factored load to check thickness of footing. In this case, we can have in this case we can have just simply if this is your column, we can have like this, I can make it that uniform thickness. It is also possible. it is also possible to make it sloped sloping because i don't want i know that here bending moment here zero because after all it is a cantilever one i can say so bending moment here zero here bending moment maximum so 
I can reduce my thickness. So, this way I can make it this is uniform then sloped sloping and the third one also possible we can make certain kind of step. like this we can provide that means we can up to certain uh, certain distance we can provide that one certain kind of say pedestal or say step one and then after that we can give uniform or we can give slope also. So, depending on the situation that we can make it, but this is the very simplest one if we can make it because here only thing here we have to find out what load cases say what type of say your stresses will develop. When you are talking say your footing what type of stresses will develop. If you look this one let us take this simple one. Let us say the load applied P and moment say M okay, and the plan of the footing. Let us say this is B that width and this is length L. since we are having moment here, so we shall get not it will not be uniformly stressed since we are having moment. So, because of that we shall because if we have axially loaded one then we shall get uniform all along, but here since we are having moment what we shall get we may get something like this. So, this one let us say Q 1 maximum stress this one you say Q 2. So, Q I can write down here P by B into L and let us say plus minus M by Z, Z is that section modulus I can say. So, 6 m by b l square i equal to b l cube by 12 i of this one with respect to this axis b l cube by 12. So, and so m y by i we are talking here B L by 2 and here another L by 2 because we are res with respect to this. In other way I can say that Z equal to I by L by 2 which comes as B L square by 6. So, I can get Q. So, this side that is Q 1 let us write down Q 1 or 2. So, Q 1 will be P by B L plus minus 6 M by B L plus 6 m by B L square and this side Q 2 P by B L minus 6 m by B L square. That means, depending on the and other way also we can make it the other we can do one trick what we can do since we are having this one that means say E equal to m by P E equal to m by P. I would like to make it uniform. I would like to make this one uniform this stress what we can do? So, we shall do it like this, we shall have little offset
or in other way I can see instead of having m here I am I am not providing m here what I am doing as if it is at a distance say your sorry I, sh I should make it here a little bit I am sorry let me make it uh, clearly let me write down I am sorry <coughs> okay so I want this is your p and let us say okay so i can have as per my this drawing so i can have this is your e so e equal to m by p and then what we shall get we shall get that uniform uniform soil pressure okay that q this way also we can make it so this is one way but generally we avoid this one we generally keep the center line of the column and center line of the footing same generally because this way if we make it that we should not have any um, that we, in this case we are getting uniform soil pressure whereas in the other case the one i have told in this case we are getting that one side maximum other side less so it means that if we get p by b l plus minus 6 m by b l square see in one case it may happen that i shall get this side 0 that q 2 equal to 0 i shall i shall get depending on the value that e so i can get that q 2 equal to 0 one case it may happen if we further we go then also it may happen that i shall get only certain portion that not fully it is in contact that is also possible So, if we write down here P by B L minus 6 M by B L square equal to 0. So, what we shall get it here M equal to P times E the other way I can write down M equal to P times E. So, I can write down or so e equal to l by 6 so we are getting e equal to l by 6 that means if we get e equal to l by 6 in that case what will happen it will happen that you will get only on one side that means if this is the length l of length of the footing so in one end we shall get 0 so now if that p or e exceeds that l by 6 value then what will happen we shall get we may get certain length say like this that means certain portion not in contact with the soil this is if e greater than l by 6 this means e equal to l by 6 so these are the different cases we generally consider that e equal to l by 6 get an l by 6 all those things so generally we avoid okay so let us now come back the thickness of the foundation or footing footing what should be the thickness of footing how shall we what is the governing criteria it should be sufficient to resist the shear force
without sear steel. So, our case here that we have to provide the thickness of footing such that it will resist the shear force without shear steel that means no stirrup we do not provide any stirrup that means here in this case for m20 grade of concrete we have to give that means say your tau c for m20 tau c equal to say 0.35 newton per square millimeter that means that value shear stress should come less than 0.35 newton per square minimum <laughs> critical one the critical one if i say uh, just uh, for your let us check it that will be in available in uh, yes uh, sorry now that is your say 0.28 so 0.28 but depending on the that is your 0.28 is the minimum as per say table 19 of is 456 but if we if we know the area of steel area of stencil steel depending on that we can take that is say 0.35 that is why I have told 0.35. So, that means as if we are giving certain say tensile steel on the basis of that your critical stress of the shear stress that is actually you have to find out. So, that is why I am telling say 0.35, but as per table 19 for M15 0.28, M20 also 0.28, M25 by 0.29, but that is less than equal to 0.15 percent. Okay, but if we provide say 0.25, then we are getting 0 0.35, 0 0.36 like that. So, we can take say 0 0.35 Newton per square millimeter. Now, also it should be sufficient to resist the bending moment. And here also we impose another criteria without compression steel. So, that means shear force without shear steel that means there is no stirrup and bending moment without compression steel that means only we are providing that one say tensile one. So, in footing we shall get the tensile one at the bottom that one we shall get it. So, here we are getting that one say without compression steel we have to do it. And also we can note another one number 3 that to withstand corrosion. that can be caused from ground. So, at this uh, we should have these three um, cases at least we should have that for that we have to provide the thickness. So, what about the minimum percentage of steel? In this case, we shall use that slab that whatever we provide the minimum reinforcement for slab that is 0 0.15 percent for Fe 250 and 0 0.12 percent for Fe 415 and this you will get it in just for your reference clause 26.5.2.1 of page 48 IS 456-2000, the same clause for slabs. What about your cover? Generally we provide say 40 millimeter, not less than 40 millimeter. So, we can let us say 50 millimeter we shall provide 
50 millimeter if we have certain say lean concrete that means we are providing not directly on soil or say 75 millimeter if it is directly on soil. That means the if we provide that one, so if then we have to provide 75 millimeter. Generally, we provide say sand, then we are having lean concrete, and then we provide that your say foundation. So 40 millimeter or 50 millimeter, let us say we shall provide for clear cover when you are providing with on lean concrete. Otherwise, if it is on the directly on the soil on the ground, then we have to take say 75 millimeter. Okay. Now let us come. Uh, I think what we can do instead of uh, uh, coming um, say your let us take one problem I think that could be easier that we can do it. But before that let us take that we have shear and bending. So, we have shear and bending the bending we take it say if this is the plan of the footing. The bending we consider at the face of the column. So, bending we shall consider at the face of the column. That means, if this is your length L, this is your say B, A is the say footing uh, sorry column A and let us take this is square. So, this length is equal to L minus A by 2. So, that means, we shall take this per portion L minus A by 2. So, we shall take due to bending, we shall find out the bending moment at this position and which will be taken care of as I say your cantilever beam. So, if Q is the load that means, in other way if it comes like this So, this is your say Q. And this length is L minus A by 2. So, bending moment will be equal to Q times that is a B this way and L minus A by 2 whole square. So, I shall get so I shall get this particular one here times half this length we shall get it here. So, this is will, will be over that whatever the bending moment we shall get it we shall get this bending moment here and we have to check that thickness of this one we have to check it with this bending moment. So, for footing we have to check the bending moment due to the soil pressure whatever you are getting. Next one we shall get it that shear, shear we have two cases one we call it one way shear. other one is called two ways or punching shear. What about this one way shear? One way shear it means if 
if this is the column position, if effective depth of footing D, then we have to take a section at a distance D. So, this is your D that means the shear force we have to compute at this section compared to the bending moment we are getting the shear force at this section which is at a distance D from the face of the column not immediately on the face of the column which we have done it for bending moment here we have to find out at a distance D that means in other way I can say as if we are having 45 degree dispersion of the load. So, we are going 45 degree dispersion of the load. So, we are going to that up to say D that means we are calculating the section here in other way I can say. as if we are having we are going here this is your D and this is your D. So, I am going that means I am taking this section this is 45 degree. So, this is your effective depth D. So, we are calculating here at this section and this is called one way either we can compute here or we can compute here, but if it is rectangular obviously we have to take the longer direction not the width because that there the shear force obviously will be less. And what about the punching shear or two ways or both ways? It means that we this is the column position. So, we shall go all along in all sides and this one will give you at a distance d by 2, d is the effective depth of footing. What does it mean? What, are, what we are doing basically? We are doing here because punching means simply it will pierce. That means, as if this portion you are applying load, you are applying load like this that means, as if this portion will just simply break and it will just simply insert that one. So, that means, you are having that one say plate and it will just simply you, you are piercing through that and that is called the punching shear or two ways shear or both ways all sides you are having. So, what is that what is the effective area that means, what is the area which is actually concerned with the shear if this is the length this is also so a column dimension say square so we shall get four times a plus d by 2 plus d by 2 the total perimeter, perimeter equal to 4 times a plus d by 2 plus d by 2 because this is the a and d by 2 this side, d by 2 this side and 4 times if it is say square. So, we shall get the perimeter of this one that is 4 times this one which is comes as 4 times a plus d. What about the shear force? The shear force will be equal to total shear force. 4 times a plus d times the depth d. Please note we are talking the perimeter, this is the perimeter. What about the area? Area means along the I can say like this, area means this one because this is the one say if this is your say at d by 2, we are putting the I can say this is the column, this is the column say your the calculator that we are putting here that is the column and we are going say at a distance d by 2 in all sides. So, we shall get the perimeter that we can compute. 
So, this dimension if it is rectangular, so it is A and it is small b say. So, A plus d d by 2 d by 2 and this side may be b plus d by 2 d by 2 we can go. So, we can get the perimeter and we, are, we have to find out the which will register shear. Shear will be registered by this area. Shear will be registered because the, if this is the depth of the footing, shear will be registered by this area. So, this area what will be this area? This will be the depth. So, perimeter times the depth that we shall get it. So, that is what I have written here 4 times a plus d we are talking say square footing. So, 4 times that square column. So, 4 times a plus d times d times the allowable punching shear. So, that is let us say tau p. Tau p is the allowable punching shear. So, this one will be given that one say shear force and that should be equal to or greater than the whatever the your say column load. So, that should be equal to that means not only column load including the also you have to add the self weight of the footing. So, self weight of the footing plus the load whatever is coming from the column and from there whatever you are getting that say total load design load that one from there you will get the shear force that is the shear force that should be equal to or less than this value then you can say it is safe. So, if I now uh, since I have come to this one, so let us come this one here. If this is your B or L, let us say this is your B, then in that case what will happen here? I can find out the shear force here also. Shear force here, what will be the shear force here? Again here B times the D and due to this load because that we have to resist this portion. Whatever shear force will come due to this load, this side, left side at this section that we have to resist. Here again we are talking that one say vertical section, the one section at the wall or whatever we consider. That section you have to resist. So, depth times this length that we have to resist. So, these are the different cases we get it here. Yes. Sir, what, what is that hypotenuse means if the last figure? This one. I mean to say that since I am taking say d is the distance, I can say as if this load dispersed at say 45 degree. So, that means if this is your d, so this one also will be d. So, that is why I am taking that one say at a distance say d, that means in the other way I can argue that as if we are taking a section and as if you are having say 45 degree load dispersion, that way we can say. So, so, that means, we, we have to design the your say thickness of the footing, we are having three cases, one case is the bending, another case shear, shear having two, one is called say one way shear, another one is called say punching shear or two way shear. On the basis of that only we can provide the thickness. What we generally do, we generally find the shear in the that uh, your footing that is more. So, we can start from we can calculate depth the generally the usual procedure in design you calculate depth from any one of the three either shear from punching, shear from one way or bending you can calculate the depth and you check for others whether it is satisfied. So, that is the usual procedure here what we can do we can check for the one way shear sorry we can find out the depth from the one way shear and then we can calculate for others. So, let us check here, I think we can start solving one problem, but before that uh, I, I think we shall get time. So, we shall, we shall take maybe say let us keep it for the next class. So, let us at least tell say minimum depth. So, let us at least write down depth should be safe in whatever I have told just let us just simply enlist it. The depth should be safe in one way and two ways here. I have already told, but let us just write down without 
C R reinforcement. The depth should be safe for the bending moment. without compression reinforcement so we can uh, take this one and uh, uh, i have already told that 0.15% for fe 250 Point one two percent for FE four one five as well as five hundred. So this this depth you have to provide, and also we can say one fifty millimeter at the edge of the one fifty millimeter at the edge of the footing. This should be the minimum depth. I can write down here one fifty millimeter the edge of the footing. So, and but 300 millimeter if it is on pile foundation, 300 millimeter that is the minimum, this, is, this one I am talking minimum. So, minimum 150 millimeter at the edge of the footing, if it is a minimum 300 millimeter if it is on the pile. So, I think I, th I can stop here today. So, next class we shall solve problem at least one square footing and uh, because our main objective here that we would like to finish it that what all the different components this footing because we have done slab, we have done beam, we have done say columns and we have done say your now we are doing footing and one more we have that is your say um, staircase. So, that for at least for a building we shall have all the components then only we shall start with say at least one multi story frame, multi story building we shall design for all the components starting from the analysis and the design. Okay? Thank you.